Hey everybody, welcome to Cousin Jack Cars. I'm recording this in October 2022 and it's time to get ready for autumn. So we have these little autumn acorn gnomes and today I'm going to show you how to whittle one of these little guys. Uh, and we'll use this uh, Stanley utility knife with a Linux gold blade for the most part. I have some other tools that I can grab if I need them. So I also want to let you know here in October, I'm going to do a giveaway. That's right, free carving. And uh, you could be the winner. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel. And then right below this video, leave a comment in the comments section. Uh, so that'll be an easy way for me to reach you. Okay, so subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. And then no cost to you, uh, I'll make sure and cover all the shipping and everything else and you'll have yourself a Cousin Jack carving. So let's uh, go ahead and get started here. I've got my thumb guard and my glove ready, and we'll talk a little bit about the setup first. So on this particular uh, carving, it's a one inch square block, okay? And it's two inches tall. Here for the feet, we have a quarter inch square on either side and of course you wanna have center lines on your piece on every side, okay? So put your center lines on there before you get too far along. So the quarter inch square, that's six millimeter square. And then to position your nose from the bottom, you measure up one inch, make a little dot, uh, 25 mils, right? And then put a quarter inch square, six millimeter square around the dot. And then you'll have your nose. Now also, on the sides here, I wanna show you a couple measurements too. From the bottom, we come up an inch and three quarters. That's gonna be the sort of the top of that acorn stem. And then we're gonna come down about a quarter inch from there and that's where we put the kind of the main part of that acorn, okay? And then also for the acorn itself, here on the front, you're just more or less going straight across in line with the bottom of the nose or the top of the nose, right? And then in the back, it's gonna have a very slight, you can see a very slight angle from front to back here. In the back, we're gonna go up from the bottom, one half inch, this is gonna be a hairline. And then one inch from the bottom is where we're going to have the acorn right there, 25 mils, okay? And so that's the setup. Let's get started. The first thing I'll do is just kind of notch in this foot. Get my blade in there and then cut down to it, kind of on an angle there. We'll do it on the other side as well. Get a good slice and angle in. Now we'll also go ahead and notch in where the bottom of the acorn would be. So we'll go ahead and put our knife right in there. Slice at an angle. Same thing on the other side. Now, while we're at it, we can do that on the other corners for this acorn, right? Where the acorn meets the hairline. Just like that. Okay, so on these feet, what we want to do is from the front of the foot, that top part, you're just gonna draw a line from there, kind of bringing it back right to that center line. That's going to be the shape of that foot, okay? And we'll go ahead and cut that in right now. Just gonna take a little stop cut here, following that pencil line, just like that. Then I'm gonna bring my knife right about here. This is where that beard will meet the foot. I'm just going to take a little chunk out there. Now 
Now for that beard and for the hair, all we do to get that set up is we come from the bottom of the acorn here down about one eighth of an inch and make a mark. And we come forward from there about one eighth of an inch. And that's where the hairline starts and just angles back to where we drew that line earlier, half inch from the bottom here. For the beard, we go from that mark we made that's one eighth down we bring that right down here to the shoe, which is about an eighth of an inch back on the shoe, kind of uh, sticking with that one eighth inch. Now, right here, we see a triangle opportunity. We can go ahead and put the tip of our knife in from this angle. And then also from this angle, just like that. Now all we're going to do is slice up into that corner and get some depth. If that doesn't want to pop out for you, just keep at it. It'll come out. Also want to put in this stop cut for the hairline coming up to that beard right there. Okay. And we'll go ahead and put in, get some separation the uh, hairline and then also stop cut for the beard just like that and I'll slice up to it I'm doing this uh, on the difficult side right now for me being left-handed I'm doing this upside down but for you if you're working on the left side of the gnome if you're right-handed It'll be a little easier. All right, so we've got those lines cut in. I'm just gonna come back here and put a notch at the hairline, just like that. Same thing over here. And we'll get a stop cut in there for the hair. And slice up to it. And then while we're here, we'll go ahead and put a stop cut for the bottom of the acorn, where the acorn meets the hairline. And go ahead and remove that. And then come on to the side, same thing. We're going to put a stop cover right here. and then slice up to it. And then the front. Now this is where you wanna be careful. You don't want to take away material from that nose. I would put a stop cut right above it, that's fine. And then right next to the nose on either side, we have an opportunity for another triangle. So we put the tip of the knife right in here just draw it down a little bit. And we come over here, same thing, tip of the knife, dig into that stop cut. Now we're slicing right up to it. We get some good depth, start to bring out that nose. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Put the tip of the knife in here and we'll draw it right down. And then come in with the tip of the knife here. Get some good depth. And on this one, I'll slice it upside down. And then we have that depth. We're starting to bring out that nose a little bit. And then separate the acorn from the rest of the face. Now remember, we're leaving this space here between the top of the nose and the bottom of the acorn we don't want to have a lot of gap in there. Okay. Now, since we started on this side, we've kind of put ourselves uh, some, some roughed out shapes. We're going to do that on the other side as well. 
First, I'll just bring in a foot. And we'll separate it a little bit. I know where my beard line will be. I didn't draw it with a pencil here, but I know I've carved enough of these to bring it right down here like that. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a triangle cut right here and also a stop cut for that hair. And then we'll go ahead and get some depth. Okay, I'm just going to continue here, work on these sides, remove the bandsaw marks, remove the pencil marks, and continue to get some depth here. Just getting these shapes roughed out. Now on these little guys, I tend to leave the sides fairly flat. Same with the back. It's just a style. It's a choice, right? A design choice for me. I want them to have a little bit more of a square shape in the back. I round them off in the front for the face and the beard and such, okay? So same thing over here. We'll get rid of the bandsaw marks and the pencil marks. Now you may be wondering, by the way, uh, this little guy here, a little football character, I carved this for presentation I did on the International Association of Wood Carvers uh, meeting on September 10th. If you haven't seen that video, go take a look at their website. Uh, I'm sorry, YouTube channel. That's the IAWC, International Association of Wood Carvers, and you can watch me carve that little guy. Okay, let's get back up here, put a stop cut here where the acorn meets the hair on the side, and we'll just slice up to it. And now that we've roughed out those shapes, I'm just going to go ahead and start knocking off the corners here at the top. So to get the bottom, or I should say the top here of your acorn, it's really about, um, I'm going to say a little more than quarter inch here from the, the bottom of the acorn to this mark here. And you want to leave a good good bit there all right but we're going to just take off some corners all the way around and now if you haven't done it already make sure you put yourself a center mark on your piece okay that's going to be helping you to keep your perspective on where the middle of the uh, acorn is for your stem Simple thing to do, just draw an X from one corner to another, and where you have the X uh, intersecting, that's gonna be your center, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and continue sort of rounding. Okay, for now I'm going to leave that right where it is. We'll get back to it later. And we're going to start rounding the front here where this beard is and where the face will be. We don't want to have this flat looking face. Okay, so we're going to start to round by removing the corners right on the side of the beard here. Just start working that down some to get it rounded. Same thing over here on this side. Now, before I go too far, I want to make sure I get a stop cut here for the bottom of the nose. Don't want to remove material that I need in order to get the nose. So let's go ahead and 
start bringing that nose out a little bit more at the bottom. And very quickly, you can see we have material on the side of the nose here that we want to remove. So I'm going to put a stop cut in for these feet. Come over here, come up like this, and the same thing over here near this foot. For the material in between the feet, I don't want to remove too much of that because we do use that. And I give you an example here on this guy. You can see how the beard comes down between the feet. And so we don't want to take away too much material in between those feet. But we do want to kind of separate out the beard from the foot, right? So we'll just make a little cut. on each side to get some separation there. And we'll keep angling that beard in around the top of that foot, just like that. And take away the bandsaw marks and pencil marks. Let's go ahead and start shaping these feet. We're going to just uh, knock off the corners here at the top. Bring it back a little bit. Just get a little angle cut here. To get us some separation for the foot. and then clean it up. Also want to remove the bandsaw marks from the side of the foot, okay? As well as the front. And we'll work on the other foot. Again, knocking off the corners. Right there, and bringing that back a little bit at the top, just like that. And of course, we want to remove bandsaw marks, pencil marks, you name it. And we also want to keep in mind that we want these two feet to kind of match as far as their size and their shape, okay? So to do that, you always kind of uh, want to start with one side, pick a side, like we did on ours. We started over here on this shoe. Now we want to work on the other side to make that one match. If you go back and forth, before you know it, you've got no feet left. <laughs> I know from experience, so take my advice. All right, so I'm just going to angle the top of that foot little bit, separate that. I want to bring this one down some so it's looking like this one over here. Okay. Let's do some more work on the old acorn, okay? What we want to do, of course, is to get a rounded sort of look. We're going to be aiming for an acorn that has a shape like this. So we definitely need to get rid of these corners, right? Let's do that. And then we'll just continue to work our way around here. All right. I think right now I'm going to switch over to this flex cut KN13. This is a detail knife and you can see it's much thinner at the point. 
right? The blade design on this one, the blade geometry has a, a thin piece of metal. When I say thin, I'm talking about how tall or how broad the blade is. So when we look, for example, and we compare, you can see on this Stanley, this Lennox gold blade has a very broad profile. It's a good knife, but there, it has its limitations. Because of how broad it is, it makes it difficult to get a really good twist on the blade in tight corners or tight spots. Whereas this design makes a nice curl. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. If I want to come up here to get this stem going, with this flex cut, I can take my knife and twist kind of scoop like this. Get a good curl, you see that? I'm using the tip of the knife, I'm just turning it as I slice through the wood. Now before I make that stem any thinner, I want to continue working on the body of the acorn because if I kind of thin out the stem, it's going to be fragile. And who knows, I might put my thumb on it and snap it right off. So we'll just kind of save a little bit of that for later. Around the bottom of this acorn, we want to take a look at our spacing, okay? So you can see whether or not you have a consistent sort of shape and level of separation. So here on the front, we can see the separation, the amount of separation here on this side. And I'm comparing that with this. When I come over onto the side, there's not much separation between the hair and the acorn there. Same with the back and same with this side. I think I want more separation, so I'm going to get some more depth. To do that, I'm just going to reinforce my stop cut a little bit here. And we'll go back over to the Stanley. And I'm just going to slice right up to it. So when you're doing this slice, you're going to be pushing and then also slicing, which means you're sliding the blade forward or sliding the ba uh, blade backwards. All right. So I'll be sliding backwards here. Ready? That's how it goes. And forward. We've got more separation there now. And we'll do the same thing here. And then over on this side. And on the bottom of the acorn here, I'm just going to take a little angle cut downward. This is going to give us that sort of curled look at the bottom of the acorn. For example, you see this, how it goes out on the sides and then it comes in and kind of curls under at the bottom. So we're just slicing angled downward like that. all the way around. Now we're going to be careful around the nose. Let's just come in here, reinforce our stop cut at the top of that nose. Now we're just going to take away a little bit of material at a time. Just a little separation here, not much. Okay. Or we'll be carving ourselves a new nose. We don't we don't want to do that. I mean we could, but we'd have to say, got your nose. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. Sorry about that. All right. So we really have some good shape going here on this acorn. Let's continue with that. 
We'll just um, take away anything that doesn't look like an acorn. How's that? All right. Good deal. And then we'll bring out the flex cut again. And we're going to take some curled cuts. Okay, well, we're getting that shape. We're getting uh, really close. What I want to do next is separate the beard and the hair. And for that, we're going to put a stop cut. We're going to come forward from this mark here, about an eighth of an inch here, and just continue that hairline. Okay, we're going to put a stop cut here because we want to tuck the beard right under the hair. So we have that stop cut. Now we're just going to slice to it. And start separating beard and hair. Same thing on the other side. Make our stop cut. And then slice to it. And let's go ahead and shape that nose. First, I want to look and see if we have enough nose. I think I want to take away a little more material here next to the nose. Come in here with the detail knife for another sort of triangle cut. Dig in the tip of that knife in there. And then I'm just going to slice right up into the corner, okay? Just like that. We do that on this side too. Come in here, dig the tip of that knife in, and then from this angle, tip of the knife, and then upside down now, slicing up to the corner like this. All right, here we go. And Clean that up a little bit. So let's shape that nose. We uh, can take off corners. We don't want a nose with corners on it. Taking her off the, uh, the top corners here. And we might as well take off the bottom corners too. And when you're drawing your nose, you always want to draw it larger than what it's going to be because the shaping is going to make it small, folks. I'm just coming along the edges here, along both sides, to angle it down, or I should say back. And then at the top, little more separation. It's starting to look good over there. Let's go ahead and knock off the corners of the hair. Like that.
take some bandsaw marks off here, kind of round that. And the same thing on this side, just take off some bandsaw marks, sort of round the back of the hair. And then we can kind of put in some texture for the hair, okay? And to do that, I've already got a, a little separation right here, okay? And I wanna start putting in texture, but I don't want to put any force up against that edge when I start my V cuts. So where I have this edge right here. I'm going to angle my knife away from that and just give it a little push. Now I'm going to come back this way and start texturing. See that? Same thing. Angling away, angling back to it. And it won't take long. i come down here to the bottom. Won't take long to get some hair texture in there. I like to use a little bit different texture for hair on the head than I would for beard hair. Again, and so I think you get the idea. I'm going to continue with this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do some work here on the face and the beard. Now on these autumn acorn gnomes, we, um, we're not going to do a mustache. You can see these two little guys here. They have a beard and everything, but no mustache. This guy has sort of a regular old smile. This one over here has sort of an offset smile. You can see it's short over here and it goes way up on this side. Why don't we do that? Let's have some fun with it. And to do that, first thing we'll do is start from the, the bottom of the nose, come down from the center of that nose about a quarter inch just make a little dot. Then over here on this side, we're going to come out even with the bottom of that nose. We're going to come out about an eighth of an inch, give ourselves a dot there. And then on this side, we'll bring it up, not to the bottom of the nose, but maybe halfway between this dot and the bottom of the nose over here to this side. And we'll just connect these dots. And then we've got this little offset sort of a smile. Make a little line here, and a little line like that. Yeah. All right, now to go ahead and cut that in, we will start with the corners. So come to this corner here, take the tip of my knife, and just kind of dig it in like that from that angle. And then we'll come to this angle, same thing, tip of the knife, just like that. Come up here to the other corner, hit it from this side, and then from this angle over here, just like that. And that'll give us some good depth in those corners. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is just sort of trace along with the tip of my knife, 
trace along that pencil line where we want that smile to be. Okay, sort of a stop cut there. And I'll come up here to the corner, slice into that corner there, take out a chunk, get a nice shadow going. And we'll do the same thing over here, slice into the corner. And clean that up. Now, we'll go ahead and take out just a sliver of wood along that stop cut. Now we're just gonna even this out a little bit here. It doesn't take much, pretty simple, see that? I want a little more shadow in that corner there. Yeah. Perfect. I like it. Okay. So the next thing we'll do is kind of work on where we want the beard. Okay. We'll just um, leave some room for that face. So we'll sort of come around here like this and around like this, just with our pencil. To give us sort of an idea. Yeah. And then we'll go ahead and start making some cuts to add some beard hair. All right. I'm going to come up here, bring my knife down like this, slice over to it. Some of these I'm just going to make shorter than others. And for this part of the beard coming down between the feet, we're just going to give a little sort of an S curve like this. See that? And then come back at it from the other side and get ourselves a shape. And continue with kind of some more curvy lines. Just want to give it some interest, right? Something other than straight lines, like we used with the back of the head on the hair there. Now you could use a variety of methods to put in this hair on the beard. Same with a mustache. You could, of course, use a V-tool. And you can do the whole thing with a wood burner. I've, uh, I've actually got a video on that. If you haven't seen it, you can take a look. It gives a really good texture. And it's pretty simple to do. So there are a lot of methods, including the one I'm showing you now with the knife. You can continue working on that beard, like I say, and get it worked out. What I want to do next, though, is show you the texturing on this acorn and how we get that. And there are a number of methods, again, that you could use. You definitely could use your knife. You could use V-Tool. And 
my preferred method that I'm going to share with you today uh, will be the wood burner, okay? All right. So let me take a second and uh, get my wood burner cranked up and we'll continue. So with this acorn look, in order to get the right kind of shape, we have to do this cross hatch of lines, okay? And you can see here, we basically want to make these small little diamond shapes that an acorn would have. And in order to do that, we're using some curved lines that cross this way, and then of course this way. And like I said, I like to use my wood burner when I'm doing this. And I'll show you uh, that method, okay? So I did a little bit more shaping on this acorn. I gave a little angled cut here on the top of that stem. I think that looks pretty cool. And I'll take my wood burner now and kind of show you where I go with this. I like to start with a line from this side of the stem and bring it down to this corner here on the front. Just like this. Just using the edge of my wood burning pen, you can see, makes a nice line there. And now I'm just going to start putting in some additional lines that'll be parallel to that. Okay, so now I'm just going to start a crosshatch kind of a shape. Start up here and down to the opposite corner, like that. And this goes pretty quickly and um, kind of fun. And before you know it, you've got yourself pattern that makes it look like an acorn. Now there's another little touch that I like to add and I'll show that to you here in a second. Actually, a couple things. All right, so you're getting the idea there. On an acorn, it's not unusual for them to have this little sort of a separation in the middle of that little diamond shape, just a little touch. Just like that. This is just another little added detail, okay? You don't have to do this part. I think it adds a little bit. And it's, like I said, very easy to do. Anyway, you get the idea. The other thing I want to show you is coming up onto this stem, I like to give that some color with the wood burner too. For this, I'm using a flat side of the wood burner. Now this, this is all gonna be painted, of course, but the color from the wood burner absolutely does show. Another touch that I like to do when I'm working on this beard to sort of blend in the textures from the beard to the face, I like to come in here with my wood burner and just draw a little bit. 
put in lines that resemble whiskers. And I think this really helps to just make it look like that beard is just naturally sort of blending in with that face. And I'll show you an example or two right here. You can see I've done it here. And I did a little bit on this guy too, uh, mostly on this side, not as much, but I like the way it looks. Well, folks, I think we've got ourselves a pretty good looking uh, little acorn gnome. I want to remind you that during the month of October, I'm going to be collecting uh, submissions for a free carving. If you would like to have a free carving, just subscribe to the channel and then leave a comment below this video. Uh, you don't have, even have to make a long comment. You can just say, hi, Cousin Jack, whatever you want. Anybody who does that by the end of October, 2022 will be entered into a random drawing for a free carving and I'll pay the shipping. Thanks for coming along today, folks. Really appreciate it. If you have a second, please hit that like button below. That really helps. Thanks. We'll see you next time.